Welcome back. In the next three lessons, we'll be designing the external Geneva mechanism that you now see displayed in the graphic area. Same as in our previous lessons on the internal Geneva mechanism, instead of using calculations to determine the parameters of the mechanism, we're going to use geometric relations. In this lesson, we'll be creating our sketches. In our next lesson, we'll be creating blocks. And in the third lesson, we're going to be putting our model to the test. Let's click the Create Layout button. As you can see, the layout has got some limitations. There's some of our tools grayed out. We can't use the Offset Entities tool, the Ellipse command, the Linear Sketch Pattern tool, the Circular Sketch Pattern tool, and so on. Since I need the Offset Entities tool and a circular sketch pattern, instead of using the layout, what I'm going to do is create a 2D sketch. Let's discard. Then I'll convert the sketch entities to blocks, and then I'll insert those blocks into the layout. By the way, you don't have to create the sketches in the assembly document. You can use a SolidWorks part document. Let's right-click on the front plane, Insert Sketch. Take a normal two view, and let's drop a few circles here. First one, next circle, and third circle. Let's apply some dimensions now. The large circle will have a diameter of 200 millimeters. The middle circle, 90 millimeter diameter. OK. And the smallest circle will be 10 millimeters in diameter. OK. Right click and select to close the tool. Let's convert to construction geometry, OK, and let's activate the center line tool. Right click and select, offset entities. The offset will be 5.5 millimeters. Let's select our construction line, check bidirectional and cap ends. There's our preview, OK. Now let's activate the circular sketch pattern tool. First, we select Entities to Pattern. Next, our angle, 360 degrees. Equal spacing, let's leave it checked. And the number of instances, 5. Let's accept. Now let's add some relations to fully define the sketch. Control select this point and the circle and add a coincident relation. Same here. And accept. Next, I need to create a cut for the locking mechanism. So that we can easily see what's going on, let me place a couple construction lines. And I'll apply some dimensions. Let's place a driven dimension here. OK. This angle is going to be 36 degrees. And let's hide relations to free up some space here. Right click and select. Now the center of the crank will be located along this axis. The pin's going to enter the slot at this point. And it'll exit the slot right here. In order for the mechanism to work, the pin path needs to stay outside this circle. To figure out the center of the crank, let's use a three point circle. Let me place my first point here, second point, and the third point is going to be tangent to this circle. Now we've got the center of the crank. Let's create a cut. I'll start with the circle tool. I'll drop it about here. And let's dimension our circle. We'll give it a 105 millimeter diameter. OK. Activate the Trim Entities tool. Trim to closest is the method. And accept. Now let's use the circular sketch pattern tool. Entities to pattern, this arc. Equal spacing is checked. Number of instances, 5. And trim entities tool again. Trim to closest method. Right click and select to close the tool. Now we've completed the wheel sketch. We found the center of the crank also. Let's exit the sketch. Let's insert a second sketch. 
On the front plane, right-click, Insert Sketch. First here, let's define the outer diameter of the crank. Next, the mounting hole. And one more circle. I'll use this third circle to create the locking mechanism. Now I want to create a 0.5 millimeter clearance between the wheel and the locking mechanism. This diameter is 105 millimeters. Let's activate the Smart Dimension tool. So this distance will need to be 104 millimeters. Accept. 10 millimeters here. Accept. Now we need to create a pin. The pin's going to be created at the intersection of these two lines. Let's insert a point. Now let's shift select the point, this line, and the circle and add an intersection relation. Let's insert another circle. Drop it here. Dimension. 10 millimeters in diameter. Since our slot is 11 millimeters, a 10 millimeter pin gives us half a millimeter clearance on both sides. Okay, now we're ready to finish the locking mechanism. Let's sketch a circle. And let's smart dimension it. Here I also want half a millimeter clearance between the wheel and the locking mechanism. Since the diameter of the wheel is 200 millimeters, the circle needs a diameter of 201 millimeters. Accept. And let's activate the Trim Entities tool. Trim to closest method. OK. The sketch is fully defined. Let's bring in Sketch Relations now. Most sketch relations here refer to sketch one. When we create blocks in our next lesson, we're going to lose these relations. One option would be to delete them and replace them with relations and dimensions that are internal to the sketch. Or we can create the block first and then edit the block, at that point adding the dimensions and relations. For now, let's exit our sketch. We need to create one more sketch. Let's right click on the front plane. Insert sketch. This sketch is going to be a base for the mechanism. Let's say we want to create a base in a separate part document. In order to do so, we're going to need to know the distance between these two points, as well as the diameter of the holes. I already know that the diameter of the holes is 10 millimeters. So what I can do is simply measure the distance between these two holes. Make sure everything in the graphic area is deselected. Now let's go to the Evaluate tab. Click on the Measure tool. Make our selections in the graphic area. The distance here is 111.07 millimeters. Since we have a half millimeter clearance, it should work well. But in case you need more accuracy, click on the Units Precision icon. Let's select Use Custom Settings. And here we can increase the number of decimal places up to 8 if needed. OK. Oops, I changed my measurement unit to meters. Let's return to millimeters and click OK. And now we've got accuracy up to 8 decimal points. Let's cancel out of the Measure tool. And let's create our third sketch. I'll use a center line first. Now let's activate the Offset Entities tool. The distance will be 10 millimeters, tab to register. Bidirectional and cap ends are checked. OK. Lastly, let's place two circles here. And let's shift select the circles and add an equal relation. Now let's dimension them. The diameter will be 10 millimeters. Here we've completed sketch 3. Let's exit the sketch. At this point, we need to save our assembly. And we'll see you back in our next lesson.